So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be talking about a new video editing software that I came across that I wanted to share with everybody. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So let me paint you a picture real quick. You just purchased a new M1 MacBook Air or M1 MacBook Pro because you want to get started with video editing, right? You want to start putting videos on YouTube or start editing videos for yourself. So that really gives you two major options. You can use the already pre-installed iMovie, which on its own is a pretty decent editing software, especially because it's free or it comes included with your new MacBook or your new MacBook Air. It's always good to start with iMovie because it kind of teaches you the, the small things, right? But again, it's very, very limited. Unless all you need to do is maybe cut a couple clips, put them together, you know, add a little bit of background music and that's it, then sure, you know, iMovie is fine, but there isn't anything else above that. There aren't really many customizations, there's only certain filters that you can use, you can't add too many things to it, so iMovie is great if you just want to learn to cut, paste, move clips around, and then just export it as a new file. And then your other option through Apple is to go with Final Cut Pro, which is, again, a pro-level software that costs $300. Now, yes, it's a one-time purchase. It's not a membership or anything like that. You purchase it once for 300 bucks and you're good. But still, for somebody that wants to get to know video editing, for somebody that wants to kind of get started for the first time, I think Final Cut Pro is a little bit of overkill. And yes, you do have apps like LumaFusion because now you can physically use them on these laptops even though they're made for iPad OS. Again, LumaFusion was made first for the iPad, so I don't really recommend using LumaFusion as your primary editing software on an M1 MacBook because yes, it works to an extent, and it works pretty well, honestly, but still, it's made for a touch interface first and you're gonna run into some hiccups, right? So I tend to avoid LumaFusion on the M1 Max. So as I was searching around, one that kept showing up was this Movavi Video Editor Plus. So that is the one that I've been playing with for the last week or two and I've really been liking it. And I wanted to kind of give everybody a different option when it comes to video editing. Somebody that wants something a little bit more than iMovie but doesn't want to shell out 300 bucks for Final Cut Pro and still wants to use a reputable, user-friendly, and that's what Movavi Editor Plus is. Now Movavi has a bunch of different applications and a bunch of different softwares, you know, like PDF editors, audio editors, you know, the list goes on. But this is strictly their video editor of choice and this is the one that I wanna go over. So there are four main reasons as to why I gravitated towards Movavi on the M1 specifically. On the iPad Pro, I'm still using LumaFusion because that's my editor of choice for the iPad Pro, but for the, my Mac, I wanted to go with Movavi for these four main reasons. So let's hop into exactly what those reasons are. And the first one has to be the beautiful UI and user experience. So the UI itself is just beautiful, it's very bubbly, it's very in your face in a good way. So basically if you've never used an editing software before, you can kind of slowly start to pick up exactly where everything is and why everything is where it should be. It's laid out just like any other video editing software, so if you have used iMovie in the past, it's gonna look familiar. You have your you have your timeline on the bottom, you have your window on the top left which lets you play around with all your settings and your videos and your clips, and on the right you just have your viewfinder which lets you see exactly what you're playing back, what's rendering in real time, what you're editing essentially. So that is the layout and I love how, again, how bubbly it is. You know exactly where everything goes, you know where your clip should go, where your timeline's supposed to be, and again, it's just very, very easy to use and very self-explanatory, and it does come with awesome tutorials to help you get through it. So category number two as to why I chose it has to be, again, ease of use. So it goes hand in hand with the UI, but I did want to separate these two because the UI itself deserves its own category, but then the ease of use goes with the UI, right? And like I said before, everything is laid out very, very user-friendly. So there's a flow that Movavi wants you to follow. So if you go again into your top left corner, which houses all of your clips, all of your filters, your text, there's a flow to how Movavi wants you to go about and work on these projects. So obviously the first one you do is you import clips on the first tab that they have right there. Then naturally, after you have all your clips, the next thing you wanna do is add your filters over your clips, right, or your LUTs or whatever the case may be to make sure that you're color correcting accordingly. And then again, after you're done with your filters and your clips, then the next thing you wanna do is add transitions in between your clips. So if you guys are following me, you know that there's a certain flow that just makes sense with Movavi in terms of how everything is laid out. And then after the filters, you add your titles and your overlay text and whatever you need to do. And then finally, you add all your stickers. So those cool like sub to my channel, all those call to action stickers, that's the last thing you would want to add to your video. And again, I'm going to keep reiterating this. It, it wants you to follow a certain flow to maximize your efficiency and maximize your time, which is something that's really nice to have. And then category number three has to go with price. The main reason I gravitated towards Movavi is because of the fact that it was a lot cheaper than Final Cut Pro, but it gave me a lot of those same functionality and those same options, and it gave me more of what iMovie was giving me. Again, iMovie is free, so it's hard to complain about what iMovie is giving you, 
But again, you wanted to find that middle ground between not spending anything and spending $300. So with Movavi, they do have a lot of bundles, but the plain, the plain one that comes with pretty much everything that I'm showing you on here besides the YouTube pack is only 40 bucks. And it's not like a membership. You buy it one time, just like Final Cut Pro. You buy it one time and it's on your computer for good. It comes with an activation key and everything that you would need to have. And it does work beautifully on the M1 MacBook. So there's no worries in terms of having a different SOC if you're on the Intel version or the M1 version. Movavi just works really, really well on the M1 MacBook and they even have a Windows version. So they're not discriminating here, which is awesome to see. And not only that, but they do offer a nice seven day free trial so you can download it, play with it. And if it's something that you really don't like, then you just don't have to pay for it at all. You just get seven days to try it out. And then the final category, which I think is one of the biggest reasons why Movavi is so appealing to people is their effect store. So if you guys use Final Cut Pro, if you've used it in the past, you know that you can buy different LUTs, different effects, you can buy bundles and packs. And the issue with that is that you can get them pretty much anywhere. Anybody can create a LUT pack, anybody can create an effect. You have to go out and find the right one that you want. And I do think there is a store that's kind of dedicated to Final Cut Pro kind of add-ons and plugins and things like that, but there's so many third-party ones as well, and there isn't one made by Apple. Now, so if you come to Movavi, Movavi has their own proprietary effect store, right? So you can go in there and buy every single effect for a certain price. You can buy certain bundles. So if you're going somewhere that has a lot of scenery, you wanna get that bundle. If you're going somewhere, if you're a YouTuber, there's a YouTube pack bundle, which is the one that I have. And I love how easy it is to use because you just download it. It automatically gets installed into your Movavi editor and it's there forever, as long as you're on the same computer, obviously. But with the YouTube pack, I love it because it brings all those call to action things that Final Cut Pro, they were hard to find. And then with LumaFusion, they're even harder to find because there is no real Luma store. You know, there's editor keys, which has good LUTs and stuff like that for, for LumaFusion, which I do use every single time that I edit. But in terms of call to action stuff, YouTube packs, stickers, LumaFusion, that's lacking in LumaFusion, which is something that I really want them to bring. And yes, you can find them and you can make them, but the process is very, very painstaking to make. And there aren't that many stores that can provide those call to action cards or stickers for LumaFusion. And then you go to Movavi, you're one click away from purchasing any pack that you want. And I went the YouTube pack because I wanted those call to action cards like I told you. And that for me was only 10 bucks. So for 50 bucks, I get a whole editing software and all those call to action cards that would take me hours and hours to make from scratch. You know, those are just great things to have. So the Movavi store is another big seller because again, they have multiple options. You can bundle everything you want. You can bundle three of them together. You can get one at a time on demand. It really just depends on what you're trying to do. So those are the four main reasons, right? So you have the, the UI, the ease of use, how affordable it is, and then finally that Movavi effect store that has really made you know editing and transitioning to a new software that much easier. And now the last thing that I do wanna go over is let's talk about just actual performance because I'm sure you guys are asking, hey, Fernando, this all sounds nice, but how fast does it export, right? How fast does it render? Does it render in real time? Those are all questions that are very valid to have. Because with LumaFusion, everything renders in real time, it exports lightning fast. And I'm gonna give you guys an overlay of how quickly it took to export a quick sample test file. I believe it was 25 seconds. I added a couple call to action cards and it pretty much exported in real time. And I was recording 4K 60 FPS because that was a slow-mo clip that I had from before. So I did export that. As you guys saw, it exported pretty much in real time, probably a little bit faster. So from an exporting standpoint, it works great. From a rendering standpoint, I do wish that I had the 16 gigabytes of RAM because sometimes it does freeze up very, very briefly, but it's only happened once or twice from a rendering and rendering in real time standpoint. But if you have a 16 gigabyte MacBook Air M1 or even the Intel version, you'll be totally fine. The eight gigabyte one is the one that's a little bit iffy, but I would still recommend Movavi because it does still work, guys. Especially if you're recording at 1080p. 1080p handles with no problem. 4K is the one that it handles a little bit. It exports quickly, exports beautifully, but the real-time render is a little bit iffy on the eight gigabyte M1 MacBook Air. But go a little bit higher and you'll be totally fine. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Again, I wanted to get another option for you guys that wanted something a little bit more powerful than iMovie, but something that doesn't break the bank like Final Cut Pro. Because for 40, 50, you know, 60 bucks, depending on what bundles you get attached to them, it's a great software to have. And it's a great way to learn as well, because after you use Movavi for a while, and you really wanna step up to Final Cut Pro, the transition is gonna be so seamless, and it's gonna be a lot easier than going from iMovie to Final Cut Pro. But that's gonna do for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you made it to the end, leave a comment below what editing software you guys use, whether it is Final Cut Pro, iMovie, maybe you're an Adobe Suite user, LumaFusion. Let me know in the comments below. I'm always curious to know exactly what's going on. But like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, peace.